Hey guys, this is Colt Cabana, the host of the Art of Wrestling podcast. But right now, you're listening to another wrestling podcast. Not another one, but that's the actual name. Another wrestling podcast. It's time for another wrestling podcast. All right, all right, all right. Are you fucking kidding me? Guys, I got blocked again on Twitter. I'm your mark of marks. That's the most reliable source on the interwebs. The social assassin at your disposal, bitches. Welcome back to another wrestling podcast. Guys, episode 230. And on today's show, we have on Ring of Honor superstar, the mercenary, Flip Gordon. Me and Jonathan Benjamin will sit down with him and talk about Ring of Honor, Villain Enterprises. Uh, he's been injured, find out what's going on, and uh, a whole lot more. Guys, can you believe it's been two years since Flip's actually been on our show? Uh, we had him on two years ago uh, when I think he was just a few months into Northeast Wrestling. So look at where he is now two years later, one of the biggest names around. So we'll talk to him about uh, anything and everything coming up soon. So stay tuned for that one. Anotherwrestlingpodcast.com. Like us, follow us, subscribe to us. Uh, speaking of Northeast Wrestling, how you doing Friday night, guys? We're going we're gonna to try to get out there, see what's going on with everybody talk to the crowd talk to to some superstars maybe we'll see what's happening but uh northeast wrestling this this friday night guys a lot of things are happening this week but can we go back to what happened last week shall we shout out to harambe crudo harambe did not help uh my live raw experience from madison square garden cooter I'll tell you, you know, I'm excited. I, I, I rarely go to shows. I mean, I, I went to WrestleMania. I loved it. You got to go to WrestleMania. Uh, but, you know, the, the top four, I'd love to go to a Rumble, a SummerSlam, all that kind of thing. I've been to a bunch of Raws throughout my life. Uh, I've been to them. I've done it. I've seen it. But Cooter, man, I don't know. I'm at that uh, lethal weapon age of I'm getting too old for the shit kind of, kind of thing. <laughs> I mean, let's just start the night off. Here we go. We started the night off. As soon as I got there, I think I missed whatever taping it was. So I didn't see the pre-show or whatever of, uh, you know, main event that that's still on. So I didn't sit there through that. But I got there, and they started it off with R-Truth. And uh, I forget the guy. He was the New York Nick. Cooter, who's his name? Do you remember? Come on. And it's Cantor. How could you not... I don't even watch NBA. I don't watch it, so I don't out of sight, out of mind. So I figured you would know him. He's a white guy. <laughs> He's a white guy. The whole twenty four seven championship to where it's uh, like we, go. we got a celebrity. Oh, let's give him a roll up and now make him the champion. I'm like, I get that it's supposed to be spontaneous, twenty four hours a day, seven days a week. But at the same time, like, can't people work for it a little bit to where this guy just rolled him up? And then they just have like other celebs just rolling him up to where now Truth is what like a nineteen time champion or whatever. Like, Credo, I'm, I'm pause. I pause. I can't. Pause. I, I got to do this to you because that was for the Madison Square Garden crowd. And as Cantor is a familiar celebrity for that particular crowd in that building. He was a big fan favorite over there. So for him to come out there and turn heel on them, <laughs> revealing their boss, the Boston Celtics jersey, he healed on one of his favorite crowds. He wanted to play the rest of his career in New York. Opens up that fucking that jacket to see his Celtics jersey. Of course, that's a great television was... for the New York City crowd in Madison Square Garden. I'm vetoing. I'm calling bullshit on that one for you. It definitely, it definitely was a great heel turn. Um, but one thing we we all know that the WB they they are attention whores. They like to get any type of outside attention they could possibly get. This was on Sports Center the next day. Like <laughs> this, it was literally on Sports Center. They got their coverage outside of it. It was on SI. It was on all sorts of other platforms, other media platforms other than the WB. So I understand where they went, why they went with this. I mean, granted, I, you know, the outside people coming in winning the titles, I'm not too much of a fan of that. But for, for this instance, I, I agree with Cooter. I thought it was perfect because of who it was. And I thought what they were targeting, the outside um, oh. and tension they got. I thought it was great. I, I get it. So I'm just all for this, like, uh, I lay a finger on you, now I'm the champion. Like, I want to, it's, you know, it's like, oh, uh, okay, yeah, whatever. There's no meaning behind behind it to me, and it's like, it's getting more attention than your main championship. But anyway, that's the 24-7 championship. Now, the funny thing is, is that, well, it's not funny, but Austin, here's, a, here's a, one of your last superstars who can get a reaction out of 
a New York crowd. I mean, just any other wrestling crowd. Steve Austin coming out. And what's sad is that I, I feel like you only have less than a handful now of guys that can do that. I think Steve Austin, The Rock, and The Undertaker, like any other, anybody else, do not get those kind of big reactions anymore. So I think... I get what they're doing, trying to draw people in. Yeah, we're at Madison Square Garden. Let's reminisce. But it's so sad that no, they can't build anybody else up to that kind of level anymore. And I mean, I, I love Steve Austin, but man, it, how many uh, how many times are we going to get him in there to try to carry the ratings with him uh, as he comes in? But let me let me ask you a question because you were there live. Because on TV, it sounded absolutely insane. How loud was the pop when his music hit in the beginning of Raw? I'll tell you what, the loudest pops of the night were for Steve Austin, Samoa mm. Joe. Joe had the whole place chanting his name, and it was deafening. And in my section, people love Baron Corbin, man. There was Baron Corbin chants. And we'll get to that in a little bit. But uh, other than that, I mean, everybody else got regular, you know, little pops here and there. But those were the biggest I mean, they didn't like go crazy when Baron Corbin came out, but he had just like a lot of chance going on during the whole Starting show. Starting to get that turn, Credo. Here, let me let me throw this out here while while we're on it. Do you think Corbin is getting cheers because the last few weeks he's put on some of the best matches on the on the cards, or is it because it's New York and it's Bizarro Land? Well, it's like half and half though, because you had people like chanting against him and then chanting for him. And it was like, it was a mixed reaction for him. It was him. like a Cena reaction. Yeah. It was getting like that Cena, Cena sucks huh. or, you know, Kurt angle, Kurt, you suck or whatever. But, uh, something to that effect. Now, you know, with that whole Corbin thing, I mean, we'll talk about the King of the Ring in a little bit, but I, I, I feel that being the King of the Ring needs to be the biggest tournament in all the land, right? You're, you're WWE, you're in top of the mountain, this is your tournament. This is the tournament that's been around before any other tournament, if you will. And it's like, it's a big deal. I love Chad Gable. I don't mind Baron Corbin, but having these two in the finals, man, I, I really thought they were going to do something, either Ricochet and Joe. But on the other hand, I, I, the for the finals, for me, it better be Chad Gable. Uh, I think we have to just get to over there right now. If it goes to Corbin, uh, you know, it's like I feel like we're going to that Wade Barrett route again to where he wasn't the greatest wrestler. They just put it on him just to fucking do, you know, the whole I got some bad news for you or whatever. But I'm, I'm hoping Gable pulls this out anyway. But that was just some of the reactions over there. Some of some of the things you were talking about. Oh, wait a minute. Austin. What's up? You, you, you mean Chad Gable, you know? My my sleeper oh, pick. Oh, I was of waiting year? for that. Oh boy, let me tell you something. Let me let me just this throw this out here real quick, because you talk about how this tournament is supposed to be like the top of the. They never really looked at it that way. I always felt like they used this tournament to give you that next star, that next breakout star. That's how we got a Steve Austin with Austin three sixteen. That's how we got a Brock Lesnar. That this was what they used to elevate certain guys. I think Chad Gable could could benefit from this, especially oh, sure. since he's I such hope. a great underutilized talent. And now they're finally starting to see the error of their ways I hope. and using my sleep <laughs> hope. to help Fucking boost the ratings. First of all, I'm just happy, bro. First of all, it's not your sleeper pick. It's yes, it is. Sleeper pick. Look, get get the audio. We're not going to get, it, you know, gonna get into this damn argument again. <laughs> Second of all. The different, the only difference between when Austin won and all those guys won is they actually got the push and they got that that giant leap. Guys like uh, Wade Barrett, uh, who, who else was it? When Wade Barrett comes to mind where, or Sheamus too. Sheamus is another one at that time where they would just portray themselves as, as kings and there was just still mid card heels. Yeah. So I, I really hope that, like, even if Baron does get the win, whoever wins this tournament, I, I hope they get that push to something a little higher than the mid card. Even if it's just to just display that they're, you know, mm. dominant on that roster. Let me ask you guys a question because I've been hearing this. A lot of people have been complaining about this. I've been listening to this on other podcasts and everything. That's so I, I want your opinion. That uh, Cedric Alexander had one of the biggest nights of his life. Yes. Inning AJ Styles in the garden. 
Do you have a problem with the fact that the second he I won that really match, really was just going to say that Austin's music hits and not Cedric's me- music? That bothers me. It bothered me too. It's like they're using Austin to just get these guys over, even though they kind of over with everybody, yeah, you know, they, on the outside. I, I I took that as <sighs> Cedric. It's the probably the biggest win of his career, especially in. Madison Square Garden, you just beat AJ Styles and you you get the pin and all of a sudden Austin's coming out. That made like no sense to me. I get they want to give him the rub and and, and, and use Austin to the best of their advantage. But I don't think I, I, I don't think they needed it. I, I, I laughed because I was listening to uh, the episode the next day of Busted Open and, and Mark was talking about how MVP and Ric Flair had a match at the Garden, and I think it, I want to say it was the Rumble. And MVP was like, "Damn, yep. like I just had a match with Ric Flair, and, and and it floored him in the Garden." And at the same time, Ric Flair that was probably his last match in the Garden, and like that meant something to him. And to me, like it, it just kind of takes away from from Cedric's moment. But I just hope that that it doesn't, you know, his his push continues. Yeah, I heard a lot of people talking about it. I just wanted to get you guys' opinion on it too, just because it did bother me a little bit. I think I think if you're gonna have Austin come out, at least let Cedric get his moment before Austin came out to salute him with the beer. Well, you know, that was I think it was, that's why I said. Remember I said like Austin came out in the beginning to where it's like why do they keep using Austin to just get these ratings and whatnot. And going to that whole thing with Cedric and even like the the War Raiders, I'm gonna call them. I don't want to call them Viking Raiders, but uh, them coming out drinking beers with Austin in the ring. It was almost like, yeah, we had Steve Austin come in, but he almost was kind of like elevating these other mid Carter guys by just being with them, if you will, in the ring to kind of give them more of a. Oh look, they're hanging out with Austin. I guess these guys are kind of cool, you know, cool by association kind of thing. So that was a little bit interesting too to see that happen there. But I'll tell you guys, seeing it live, man, I'm telling you, they need to incorporate that sound. Like I said before, like, it's dead to us what's going on. And I was texting you guys at one point because I'm sitting there and it was the four horsewomen thing, and I didn't hear the bell. So I, I or I didn't hear anything start. I thought they officially started. And I'm like, why is it dark right now? And it's like, so they, they, they got in the ring and they're just hanging out there. And I'm like, what's go- did they just stop the match for a commercial? But I, when they came back, they rang the bell. And so I was like, oh, all right. It, like, it didn't make sense for me there because I feel like I couldn't hear it. You know what I mean? Like, I, I couldn't, I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know that we went to commercial break at one point. I, I thought the match was started. So that's where it's getting let messed me, up a little bit. Let me ask you a question about that. When... They went to commercial and they dimmed the lights. Could you see them in the ring just standing around? Yeah. Like so what, what, what exactly what were they doing? Were they still in kind of like gimmick or were they just kind of just standing around waiting? So, I mean, as I'm there watching it, I was talking to our uh, good friend Greg Capra. Uh, he was sitting with me. So, I mean, so it's like casual talk. Like, we're talking, we're watching the show, we're talking, but I'm not, you know, I'm not like getting too much out of it. And that's why I'm like, I, I knew the match. I thought it started. You know what I mean? So, like, that's why I was so confused when the lights went off. And then I think it was Bailey and Sasha outside of the ring, and, and then the other girls inside inside the ring. And so during the when it was dark, they all got inside the ring and they were just kind of like hanging out in the ring, just talking, not doing it. Like I mean, in their own corners. But and then the lights came back, and then I heard the bell, and I'm like, really? They had to shut all the lights off for that? Like I didn't realize, like why? Why, why even had to go dark or whatnot? You know, they could have still set up and did all that stuff with the lights on, and yeah, it's just even, a product. It's weird. It, it, even if like they didn't have a match, they could have at least given the mic to Becky exactly. or something. Yeah, yeah, just like, something just, during the commercial. Get the crowds talking or whatnot. So you know, that's why I'm gonna leave this show as a as a four out of ten. I'm gonna give it a Bret Hart rating of four out of ten. As soon as Corbin won, I left. I was like, that's it. I'm 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 done. I don't like. I didn't want to stay to the end after that. And like I said, I don't hate Corbin. I don't mind him. But I don't hate him, but I'm like, I just, I don't know. I, it's the king of the ring. To me, I was hoping for like a Ricochet win or at least a Samoa Joe win. And it just, I don't know. I think I'm done with live shows, guys. I think that's what I have to say. So unless it's WrestleMania or one of the big pay-per-views or something. It has to be something big because, you know, I don't know. I, I, you know, I kind of agree with you on that one because I, I look at it from the perspective of what we experienced this year at Mania. And we had a very unique experience being in the press box while Mike was freezing his ass off yep. hashtag behind the stage. 
with all what? the smoke from the pyro too. Right. I, I and I'm like I I would never if if I was if I was in there or in a section where the slightest part of my viewing is 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 not possible. I, I'm going to be so fucking mad. That I don't know how you didn't blow a gasket not seeing Valor's entrance. But Damn. but like once you get an experience like that live, like going to a house show, or I mean, what, unless yeah. it's, unless it's like NXT or like I look at a card and I'm like, oh wow, that's something that's going to be like interesting. Yeah. A regular broadcast, I'm not fucking interested. Yeah, and that's, a, I don't know. We're at that age right now, so I don't know. Uh, it's going to have to be something really compelling to get me to go there besides just being maybe free. But uh, Plus, like we discussed last week, it gets expensive. I know, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. And and for what? I mean, like, I want to, if I want to pay all this money, I want this to be mania. Or I want it to be some kind of thing that's like, oh, we went to Raw of January 20, you know, like, wh- whatever. It is what it is. The announcement has been paid for by the New World Order. If you found $100 in the street, would you pick that shit up or would you keep walking? Of course you'd take the fucking money. So why do you keep picking winners and not betting on them, Credo? That's why, Cooter, I go to my bookie. It's fast, it's easy, and they pay you when you win. Let's face it, where you're betting is just as important as who you're betting on. I wouldn't be telling you guys to bet on them if they weren't the best. If you're going to bet this football season, bet with my bookie. Did you know you could bet on games after the kickoff? If by the second half it looks like it's your bet's going to lose, you can always just take the other side. If you're the kind of guy that likes to bet a little and win a lot, try a parlay. If all your picks come through, you'll multiply your winnings. And no matter how you bet, the NFL season is the best time of the year. Join now, and my bookie will double your first deposit. Use promo code A Wrestling to activate the offer. That promo code is A Wrestling, bitches. So visit mybookie.ag today. You play, you win, and you get paid. Joining us right now, the mercenary, Flip Gordon. Now, Flip, it's been two years since you've been on the show. I think the first time we spoke, you were probably maybe a few months into Northeast Wrestling. I remember filming one of your first promos for Northeast Wrestling. Now, skip ahead a few years later, and you're probably one of the biggest names around. Is it safe to say you've been keeping busy the last two years? The last two years, yes. The last year or last seven months, not so much. It's been a rough year for me because I had blown my knee out in January, and then I blew my elbow out in June. (sighs) So what are some of the moments that you're most proud of so far in your career? Oh, my gosh. There's so many to count. Um, I returned from injury this year from the knee injury at madison square garden not only that it was sold out the most the world's most famous arena uh and i got a pinfall over bully ray that's definitely got to be up there absolutely you're well known for your high flying style uh but has uh, being injured in the past have that has that had any effect on what you're going to be doing in the ring any moves in the ring now do you do you kind of second guess what you're going to do or no I haven't really thought about that yet because I haven't even been in a ring yet since I've gotten hurt. I'm returning to the ring this weekend for Ring of Honor, so I'm hoping I get a little bit of ring time before then. I think as the mercenary, I'm not going to have to do as much high flying, although I still can. and I think that I'm not going to be limited that much at all, but I think as the character, I don't think I'm going to have to, and I really want to be that. I want to be the mercenary. A little bit of a heel turn, if you will, for you. Is, is it a breath of fresh air for you, maybe, being the heel now? Um, I don't know if it's necessarily a heel turn or if I'm just, you know, I'm tired of doing it a certain way that I was told. And now Marty's given me another option. And as a mercenary, I'm just a hired hitman. I'm, I'm an independent contractor, just like professional wrestling, you mm-hmm. know? So if somebody wants to give me a job like marty has and he gave me the best offer that's why lifeblood didn't get me Mm -hmm. because they they didn't have the best offer you shocked the world by becoming a part of villain enterprises you've said a little bit about this but how's your life kind of changed since joining the group oh it's been amazing especially because since being part of villain enterprises my meet and greets have gone up my merch sales have gone up 
Uh, and when that happens, it means I'm making more money. I'm getting back in the ring. I'm getting to do what I love. That also makes me very happy. No, yeah, for sure. And I think you told me once, if you want to make it in the business and, and make money, you, you got to travel as a wrestler. Do you think being exposed to multiple territories and different companies help elevated uh, you a lot quicker than others? Oh, absolutely. I think being able to travel and wrestle other uh, styles and other wrestlers from other countries and uh, even being in there with guys that I shouldn't have been in the ring with yet, but being in there with them taught me faster than being uh, just here in New England. If I would have just stayed in New England, uh, I don't think I would have gotten as good as fast as I did. Mm-hmm. Now, you're currently signed with Ring of Honor Wrestling, and uh, right now it's a real resurgence of professional wrestling. It's something that's mainstream again, and... Uh, it's a lot like when the attitude era, you know, it's, you don't have to be ashamed to be a wrestling fan anymore. Um, what's your current take on the state of professional wrestling? Like, how do you feel about how business is these days? I think the business is booming as, as they would say, whenever there's more work, it's better for not only the wrestlers, but for the fans, because I don't know about you, but I love ice cream. I love vanilla ice cream. Not everybody likes vanilla ice cream. And so now there's different flavors. You know, if you like Impact Wrestling, if you like Ring of Honor Wrestling, if you like WWE, you know, if you like New Japan, if you like AEW, if you like uh, CMLL, AAA, there's so many different styles now. And I just named about seven or eight top professional wrestling companies. And so that just shows you how good the professional wrestling business is doing right now. Can you tell us a little bit about, though, from uh, Brody, PCO, and Marty? What is it like, uh, just each one of them, uh, working with them? Because uh, they all bring their own traits to the group, if you will. Uh, any words about each of the members? PCO is a maniac. I don't know if you watched a few weeks ago, but we were in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. And PCO's eye malfunction, and he did a dive. Onto nobody. Oof, I saw. That's insane. I would never do a dive on a nobody. I don't even want to do a dive on the people. <laughs> Brody is probably the most agile big man I've ever seen. And he can do lucha. He can springboard. I'm pretty sure I saw him do a Ray Phoenix that double bounced something on the ropes the other day. He's just unreal. And then he's a freaking animal and a, uh, just a hoss. You were just in Chicago as part of the second annual Flips All Outside Party. Uh, what were some of the highlights from the weekend? You got to see a lot of fans. Uh, w- any Anything that really happened that you were excited about that weekend? And it was a fun time. Uh, I've had a few weeks off, obviously. I mean, actually, I've had like two months off being injured again. Um, so it was nice to be able to see the fans, uh, to see Marty that weekend with, at Pro Wrestling Tees. We did a meet and greet together. Marty and Flip take Chicago. Um, and then my all outside party, um, the second annual, just being able to be there with the fans and hang out, take pictures. Um, and we actually had a dunk tank, uh, which was so awesome and so much fun. And Brian Cage came out to, to support and Brian Pillman Jr. came out to support. And uh, it was so cool like because uh, we had um, Frank the Clown was there. Noel Foley was there. But um, Frank the Clown was talking a lot of smack to some little kids. And I kid you not, almost every single kid dunked him. <laughs> oh, man. And then uh, we raised over, I think, I, I don't know if I'm allowed to release this. I think it was over like $400 to a charity through the dunk tank. Well, so I want to I wanted to thank everyone that's a part that uh, – played that because that was so much fun and then to end it was the coolest and you can't script this um i i was watching every single person that was playing throughout the whole the whole day and i took all their techniques and you can ask anyone there i went very last and i dunked frank three times in a row (laughs) and on the third time like the little target exploded (laughs) you can't make this up you can ask anyone there. Uh, you know, uh, Flip, we, we mentioned earlier, you said uh, the different flavors of pro wrestling from all the different companies out there. Uh, I think one thing that I loved about Ring of Honor was that how they would work with New Japan or CMLL uh, or whatnot. Um, do you think 
that's probably maybe the the future of pro wrestling to where more companies are just going to interwork with each other uh, in a certain way, I guess, uh, where certain guys go somewhere and certain guys go somewhere else or whatnot. But do you think more partnerships like that is maybe beneficial to companies uh, in the future? Uh, I do think it would be very beneficial for a lot of companies just for the fact that you, like the factor uh, you wouldn't know what could happen, mm-hmm. you know, well, like me and Brian Cage, we're good buddies, you know, he's impact world champion. We're also co-holder of uh, WSW tag team champions over in Australia. Mm-hmm. Now, if impact and ring of honor were to work up, imagine if we were to tag together, you know, maybe go to new Japan and tag together. You know what I mean? Just, just for that. But I mean, when you when you work together, I think it creates more opportunities. Also, I I have a lot of goals. So, like, I want to go work in Mexico. So, if I have a goal, being partnered with CMO helps me with those goals. Mm-hmm. I wanted to go to Japan. Being partnered with New Japan Pro Wrestling helped me reach those goals. You know what I mean? That was one of the selling points on me for Ring of Honor. And I think that's a selling point for lots of people. That's why they like Ring of Honor is because you don't know which CML guys are going to come in. You don't know which New Japan guys are going to come in. But when they do, you kind of learn about them and you get to know them and you get to like them. Mm-hmm. What is your dream scenario for your time in Ring of Honor? I want to be Ring of Honor world champion. I want to be the best wrestler that Ring of Honor has. I want to climb my way all the way to the top of Ring of Honor and say that I am the best in Ring of Honor. You've wrestled everyone from Jushin Thunder Liger to Cody uh, and everyone else in between. But have you had maybe some favorites that stand out that, you know, when we look back on on this day in history, people are going to always talk about, you know, the mercenary Flip Gordon versus so-and-so. Is there anybody that's, I don't know, maybe stood out to you as being one of your favorite matches to have i would have to say me and osprey he's just one of the funnest guys i've ever been in the ring with we wish you nothing but a speedy recovery we want to see you back in action especially this weekend uh, as soon as you can i know all the fans out there want to see you back but we thank you so much for hanging out with us for a few minutes uh and for everybody listening out there i, I don't know why they wouldn't know you but if they they didn't know where to find you on social media where, where can they hit you up um all my social media is the same i keep it simple uh, so Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram is all at the Flip Gordon. Awesome, Flip. Well, you know, maybe we'll do this again in another two years. We'll see you are then, but uh, we wish you nothing but the best, man. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate you guys having me. Thanks for coming on the show. Of course. All right, well, thanks once again to the mercenary Flip Gordon. So, Bailey last week had the whole heel turn, the whole chair shot, and I thought that was it. You know, that was a big heel move. I thought we were going to get full-blown Bailey heel, and, uh, you know, we didn't get it. Everybody knows you never go full retard. What do you mean? Check it out. Dustin Hoffman, Ray Man, look retarded, act retarded, not retarded. Cat two picks, cheated cards, autistic, show. Not retarded. You got Tom Hanks, Forrest Gump. Slow, yes, retarded, maybe. Braces on his legs, but he charmed the pants off next to him and won a ping pong competition. That ain't retarded. Peter Sellers being there. Infantile, yes, retarded, no. You went full retard, man. Never go full retard. You don't buy that? Ask Sean Penn, 2001, I am saying. Remember? Went full retard. Went home empty handed. Uh, you know what, man? I, uh, it's, I, I don't know. I feel like they they went full heel for a second, and then they like pulled it right back. It was like they were testing the waters to make sure she didn't get too much backlash to where she's still playing nice, but she's acting, I don't know, like a Bailey heel. Uh, I was just hoping for a full-blown heel turn. I don't know. You listen, motherfucker. Let me explain something to you. Don't tug your pecka and listen to me, all right? This is very fucking important. Would it be believable the way that she's been fucking built up for God knows how many fucking years that we've had to see this bitch hugging people. Okay. And now all of a sudden she's going to start smacking people with a chair. It's not believable. So a little bit edgier chick who's still going to give you that hug and then maybe like flip you off when you walk away. That's kind of okay with me Mm. because to me, it's a little bit more believable. It's like she can still be her, but have an edge to her. Cause I think, the crowd was just getting a little bit annoyed with her and her little, you know, double pigtails walking around going, tee hee hee hee, hug me, hug me, uh, like a fucking Teddy Ruxpin. 
Get the fuck out of here. I'll tell you something. I love this. If this was the, the attitude error, you know, she wouldn't be hugging people as a heel. She'd be uh, tugging people. <laughs> Just giving all little tugs backstage. The hug and tug. The hug and tug connection. <laughs> oh, my God. But, yeah, I, don't, I mean... <laughs> I was just like, it, the crowd went crazy last week for what she did. And, you know, it's one of those things you didn't think you'd see and you saw it. And then they're moving at like five miles an hour with this whole heel thing. So, I don't know. I think I was just hoping for more, as usual, as a fan. But I'm still hoping, I guess. Uh, now, guys, next week we're going to be talking about, uh, you know, NXT Live on the USA Network. They are moving off of the WWE Network, but there's a catch. For the first two weeks, I believe, the second hour uh, will be played on the network. So the first two live episodes of NXT TV will be split. So the first half airing on the USA Network, while the second's on the WWE Network. Uh, and then the first full two-hour live show that will begin airing on USA will be starting October 2nd which is the same day that AEW show premieres on TNT. Now, I, I get it because they're still, like, in cycles of shows to where a, 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 some show still holds that slot, I think, for another two weeks. So yeah, then... what show is that? Because I guess it's a, they said it's the last two. What's, which one is it? Suits. Suits. Oh, yeah. They're, dude, they're not, they're not taking Suits off. That's been one of their best-rated shows for yeah. God <laughs> knows how many. They're not changing that time slot for fucking NXT. I don't care, bro. So, so baby steps with the whole transition to the transition to, to TV. But, guys, I mean, I, I get it. I, I mean, it's a little bit of a, a legwork where you got to shut off the net, uh, TV and then put on the network and watch it and whatnot and switch it over at the same exact time. But it's only two weeks, so it shouldn't be that bad. But... We're finally here, guys. We've been talking about it for months a little bit. We just found out about this a few weeks ago, but we knew AEW is starting then. It's starting to, to take fruition. Things are changing. Cooter, there's a, what, isn't there new announcers switching over to an NXT? What's this? I mean, no, it's the things... same announcers, but the here's the catch. Now that they're going live, you got to have Nigel McGuinness in full sale every week. Um, so it, it's, I guess, maybe it's a cost cutting measure because he was doing. 205 Live after SmackDown with Vic Joseph every week, and they just replaced him with Theo Madden. People like you, you guys, and myself, like, we will watch NXT, and then that second hour, we will tune in to the network. Do you think a lot of casual fans are going to do that same thing? If they have it, yeah. Yeah, it's a little bit of legwork to where it's like, ugh, I got to shut this off and then put it on. You know, I mean, it's not that That's big of a deal, but it's hard like. How is that? Really? There's some people. There's it's some the people. flip of a fucking remote. Everything barely has got a fucking app on their TV. It's 2019. You. If it's taking you more than three button pushes <laughs> to turn the fucking WWE network on your goddamn TV, then fucking take the rabbit ears, throw them out the fucking window, do what you got to do, but just switch over. You, it's not that fucking listen, hard. Right? You're right. I, I agree you're right. with you. I 110% agree with you, Cooter. But we have people today to this very day that still ask for links to stream <laughs> America, events yeah. oh, on the fucking from the fucking network <laughs> that's it so they don't have the network so we can watch this I, I also, for free yeah i also watch it. well what do I you mean just friends. google it does anybody know where I can get a stream to watch the second hour of NXT? That's more work than just fucking signing up for a exactly. subscription. <laughs> exactly, but honestly, like, a lot of people today are so cheap. That Don't they, they slide in my DMs. Give me that link, bro. <laughs> people go the extra mile to get that link than to actually sign up an account that will take five minutes. And, you know, I, I think that's the biggest thing that's going to affect this whole thing, I think, is people are cheap. Right there, you said it. Now, I was cheap the last show. I didn't want to pay 50 bucks for it. I looked up the stream. I mean, when I'm paying 9.99 a month, I don't mind it because I get all these pay-per-views, I can get all these shows. But when you're another company charging me $50 a month for just your pay-per-view, eh, you know what I mean? Like that's a lot of extra money to where I think their first moves are going to have to be to to partner with Bleacher Report or whatever to just have their shows on it for like a monthly whatever their monthly fee is kind of a thing and I mean, honestly, if you ask anybody right here, are you? I mean, you don't have a girlfriend, you don't have kids, you're just out of high school. Okay, but when you, you know, everybody else in the modern age that has to work every day and whatnot, 
you're not going to be dropping your money every month, 50 bucks here, 50 bucks there, just for an AEW show to where, I mean, am I right? I know there's diehards that are going to do, but I'm not fucking paying 50 months, so, you know, 50 bucks. Uh, it's gotta, you, you know what's know crazy something? is I'm actually considering getting rid of my WWE network for that simple fact that because I'm also a Hulu subscriber and all of the shows, Raw, SmackDown, I can watch the next day and Raw, uh, 205 Live gets put up uh, the next day is... Um, Main event and superstars is on fucking Hulu. All their NXT and the NXT takeovers are also on Hulu. Really? So what the fuck am I paying ten bucks a month for? Yeah, it's weird. No, I'm on Bleacher Report right now because I just wanted to see if they had like any uh, monthly sp- subscriptions or anything like that, and it doesn't look like they do. I think you have to just buy events like separately. And and then I I just stumbled across um, Double or Nothing. From May, yeah, and they still have it listed as fifty dollars. Jesus, really? Yep. Man, that's the thing. That's I'm saying. That's going to be the biggest thing right there because they're going to be like, well, why aren't we selling pay per views? Because it's fucking fifty dollars a month. Like, I mean, there's so much. Like, New Japan Network, WWE Network, uh, doesn't even like Impact have like that uh, on Twitch or something you have to pay for or something? Or is it, they're free still, right? So yeah, if Twitch but, is free. So I mean, I put. I don't know. I think that's just the day and age we live in. So that's going to be a, an interesting thing, if you will, of who's getting these, who's actually paying that much a month for, for all these yeah, shows. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised they haven't spent. Night. I'm surprised they haven't spent the money on infrastructure for something like that. I mean, I, I, I get you need to get a roster, you got to get a TV deal, but you know, it, to keep people's interest, and that's the other thing. How much of a cut of that fifty dollars do they get? Because somebody was explaining to me how how pay-per-view buys work and what the percentage is. And it was like, whether it was right or wrong, it, the numbers are like staggering for what they get. So for them yeah. to be able to almost like sell the farm for 10 bucks a month mm. and cut the middleman out, I'm surprised AEW didn't try doing that off the bat and yeah. having a network well, and at least starting their television show off of their network so they yeah. can start selling that first. Well, I don't, I don't know what the, what the cost for like if you wanted to buy double or nothing on pay per view, but on Bleach Report, I'm looking at it right now. It's still, and this is a, an event we watched in May. Yeah, it has passed a long time ago. They still have it listed. If you want to watch Double or Nothing, you have to pay fifty dollars. I'm looking at it right now, forty nine ninety nine for Double or Nothing. Wow. You would think that a major fucking income stream would be merchandise, yet they're letting the wrestlers sell all their own shit on pro wrestling tees. They 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 don't the the, the pay per view deal and 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 the streaming services are, are are like getting the major cuts of these fucking buys at least I would think at what point are you like pricing yourself out of the game and not making enough money off of your investment yeah because I mean like honestly though I and mean, that's a good qu- I want to ask everybody that seriously like okay yeah you're gonna buy it but I'll tell you what I was all down to buy the first one I wanted to buy it. I had to buy the first one I wanted to see it. I saw it, but after that, then you know the Fighter Fest I think was like ten or whatever it was. It wasn't fifty. It was free. It? Yeah, it was free. free. So then, okay, you got me with a free one, and then I'm back to another fifty dollar one, and I'm like, eh, you know, there's other stuff going on this month. I don't want to pay for it. So that's, <coughs> excuse me, I think it's gonna be the biggest thing at the end of the day. Well, here, here's the thing too, and and I, I forgot about this. Bleacher Report's owned by T- Turner, by TNT. Oh, that's so true. I don't I don't know if this is like. I don't know if they get more of a percentage or if it all goes to Turner. I, I, I don't know the logistics behind that because I know AEW has a deal with Turner. So right. AEW is on Bleacher Report. So the logistics behind that, I don't know exactly if, if they get the majority of the, the shares. That's the other thing. It's also on pay-per-view. So yeah. you know, pay-per-view isn't owned by Turner. So it's, it's a fucking very weird situation uh, it, unless it's just Turner saying, hey, we can give you another outlet. You know, but I, I, it's it's weird. Yeah. I guarantee you, if, if I don't have Time Warner or Spectrum or anything right now, right now, I, I have Sling TV. But I guarantee you, if somebody listening goes on to their pay per view provider and can go on their demand and try to find Double or Nothing from May to try to buy it, I guarantee you, it's not fifty dollars. Hmm. It's probably like maybe twenty five dollars, nineteen ninety nine at most, just because it's old. Uh, a little bit of a change this year coming up for the Royal Rumble, though, because Worlds Collide is going to be replacing TakeOver during Rumble weekend. And uh, we saw this at WrestleMania. It was a great concept of having stars from NXT go against stars from SmackDown or Raw or whatnot, and just all the brands having a match with each other. And I think that's awesome. Um, 
I think this could be one of the the biggest things to look forward each year, just like the Rumble, where it's the show where all WWE brands go against each other. So uh, I'm not really that upset that uh, a takeover is being taken out of here, if you will, to to be replaced with this kind of a show. I'm gonna enjoy it. What do you guys think? This is uh, this is I think well worth uh, the replacement. I just want to see the concept of how they're gonna. Is it gonna be a one night event? For Worlds Collide, are they yeah, going to split it up? It's just going it... to be, yeah, I think it's just the pay-per-view. I'm pretty sure it's going to be like Rumble one night, Worlds Collide the night before or whatever. Okay. And I'm interested then. If they were going to do what they did last time, it was cool because it was like split up in like probably like five or six episodes. But if that's how they were going to do it, it kind of takes away it from me because I always enjoy those crazy NXT events the night before a big pay-per-view. But if they're going to do that, then I'm, I'm okay with it, yeah. You're forgetting something, guys. So NXT is basically being considered a, a separate brand now. What's the likelihood that takeovers are done indefinitely and we don't start seeing NXT matches on pay per views? No, the takeovers are still going to be going as scheduled. Yeah, I think, like I said, I, I talked to Kofi Kingston, believe it or not, guys, and I asked this question because it's killing. Like, you know, we talked about it on the show last week about that whole. You have you put NXT on USA now, and to, you know, in the eyes of the younger viewers. It's not, oh, developmental territory or your minor leagues or whatever. It's brand number three, you know what I mean? SmackDown, Raw, and NXT. And I, that, I think that's at the end of the day, regardless if they're still wrestling at full sale or you know on the road or whatnot, but... I don't know. It's uh, I think this is going to be a whole, a whole new yeah. a whole new game with them. So well, unless unless things change, I mean, I, I listened to an interview with actually with Triple H, and Triple H was speaking about from what Vince McMahon's role is and to are they going to lose the takeovers? And they says and basically he said that they're not going to lose takeovers. Takeovers are still going to be the nights before big pay per views. Um, so I'm, I'm taking what he says. Like that, could it change? Yeah, it could possibly change if if it takes off and Vince wants to add it to the the main roster card. But for now, as of right now, takeovers are still as scheduled. Yeah. Well, you know, guys, uh, in the past we used to run down a lot of the pay per views and talk about everything and anything. Uh, we have Clash of the Champions happening this weekend. I don't need. We don't need to go over every match for 50 minutes. I'll try to run through some of this, but. I love this show because I feel like you know this is this is technically what WrestleMania should be to be in my eyes at like every championship online, uh, Clash of Champions. I, I'm loving that they're doing it. Uh, what was it? Wasn't they have another pay per view? What was it? It was a uh, Night of Champions, right? Night of Champions, yes. I, it's so good that they're using like these classic names going back to it. So the Clash of Champions happening this weekend. AJ Styles, real quick, champion versus Cedric Alexander for the United States Championship. Do you think the stuff that we saw at MSG? Was just a foreshadowing of we're putting over Alexander, Cedric Alexander, this weekend? You know what they say when you book the guy, the fucking show before the pay per view to win, and you book him strong, it makes him look great, but odds are that motherfucker ain't winning. Yeah, Wrestling 101, the night, the, the Raw before any type of event, if he looks good on that go home show. Nine times out of ten, he's not winning on the main show. I am looking forward to that match, though. Oh, that match is going to be amazing. Tell me about how this will be. Drew Gulak versus Humberto Carrillo versus Lince Dorado for the Cruiserweight Championship. Uh, guys? This, this is great because I, I still watch my 205 Live, uh, not as religiously, and, and it's a shame because I was clamoring for fucking Gulak to be champ for the longest fucking time, and he fi- and and and... and that roster needs some beefing up, man. It was that's why it was nice to see Kushida on there. Uh, you got the two high flyers going up against the guy with his ground game. That's that's always fun. And this is Lince Dorado's first opportunity at the uh, cruiserweight championship. <sighs> that guy on paper is just great. I, I love him in the ring. I, I'm still on the fence uh, uh, about uh, Humberto Carrillo. That's that's gonna take a. Uh, a little time for me, but I'm I'm looking forward to this match. Humberto. That sounds too familiar, Humberto Carrillo. <laughs> sounds like another name of a person that I fucking hate. Harambe. Harambe you can't Carrillo. hate Harambe. No, Harambe's making a comeback. All right, well, Shinsuke Nakamura's had a decent standing as of late, uh, with Sami Zayn by his side. 
Uh, he's going against The Miz for the IC Championship. Miz, the forever IC Championship matchmaker. Fucking, it seems like. I feel like I've, at WrestleMania 29, he won the, the IC Championship. This dude's been fighting for it forever. Uh, don't take it off Shinsky, right? I want to keep it on Shinsky. Uh, can we get... I never thought I'd hear you say that. I want to keep it on Shinsky. I'm, a sh- I'm, I'm, I'm all you for it. You a Japanese guy. I'm all for the strong style to come back to and... hold the Intercontinental Champion while wrestling in North America. You better believe it, baby. All right. I'm with you on that one. I'm with you. I'm going to I'm gonna bring something up, and then eventually we're going to get into this. But Clash of Champions, that's supposed to be every match is for a title, correct? Yeah. Okay, go on. We'll 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 get when we get to a certain match, the, okay. you'll understand where I'm going with. You got it. Okay, so uh, he wants to pick on Roman. All right, <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you on that one. Let's go. Can we just fast forward to that? Because that's this sounds like a good I, time. I do want to say people were booing him at uh, MSG, so you can boo man with cancer. cancer kids. I'm so sorry. okay to boo a man if he had <laughs> cancer. I don't give a fuck. I said it before. Well, I'll terrible. say it again. Yeah, some people like weren't clapping during that, and then like it was like it, it, was, it was an awkward moment. It's like, well, if I don't clap, am I an asshole because I'm not clapping, or is it like, can I just watch what they're showing me? And that's when you just get up and go get popped, <laughs> and you're not an <laughs> asshole. You're just hungry. All right, so fast for forward. Me t- for yeah. me on TV, it sounded like the the crowd was like applauding him, and like we're cool. How, well, how was it live, honestly? Well, that's what I was saying. It was funny because like in the well, my section, <laughs> my section, <laughs> my side. <laughs> they stuck Creed with it other derelicts. It wasn't derelict. me. It wasn't me, but like people around me, like. Like, he came out, He when they start, first played his song, it was boo, and then he's like, well, I'm here today to bring these cancer people, then it was like, oh, boo, uh, like, people started trailing off, like, ah, oh, fuck, they're bringing out the kids, and it's, <laughs> they always do it, like, we can't boo him, because he's bringing out, the, anyway, it was a mixed reaction, In the beginning it was still boos, and then it was like, oh, fuck, he's doing something with kids about cancer, we can't fucking boo this, and. Oh, Mike, you know what I love about this? What? Credo was like, it wasn't me, but it was these guys in this section. You should have heard the guy behind me Why is yelling always in my Japanese section? racial epithets. It was disgusting. <laughs> so, I don't know, man. It's just my section. I guess it just happens where I sit. But uh, all right, so uh, how about this? Uh, poor Dolph Ziggler. This dude gets thrown around to anything wherever they need him kind of a thing. But Seth Rollins and Braun Strowman versus Dolph Ziggler and Robert Rude for the Raw Tag Team titles. Um... Uh, do they have to take off the tag team championships off these guys so that they can have a successful championship match later? I think that's. I think it might happen. I'm surprised you asked that question and you didn't go into your your usual. Well, why do we just gotta throw two random guys? I did, together uh, to make it to, <laughs> part you know, of my whole poor like, Dolph Ziggler spiel. But, but that's the thing. Like in this case, it's one of those teams where I'm like, I'm kind of interested in it. It's just like because, Sheamus like, and and uh, Cesaro, I think a team yeah, like that. They, they mix well. One of the two well. random ones where it would actually worked. Yeah. I think this team could actually work. You know, if they start, you know, dressing a little bit similar, they, they, they got a little bit similar. If Dolph Ziggler starts coming down, though, wearing a fucking Ric Flair robe like like Bobby Roode. I'm changing the fucking channel, I but will, I'm interested. I will lose my shit if they do the dip, the typical WWE thing and mash their theme songs together. Oh, I hate that. I will oh, lose I was my dying. shit. Oh, I'm in the gym. I'm working out, and and I had the WWE uh, WWE theme like playlist. It's got like 600 themes on there, and the Jericho one came on. Oh my god! I wanted to punch a fucking baby. Oh, bro. There you go. <laughs> and what happened? You know what came on right afterwards? What's that? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a go hot. I'm a go hot. Yeah. Oh fuck! They I can't escape the fucking song. I had you. to download the fucking thing. <laughs> well, uh, at the end of the day, Dolph, I think Robert Root, then I guess would be a good uh, tag team champions. I'm with it. You're with it. Yeah, I'm. I, I could see it as. Here's my thing. You know, I'm okay with it, and I'm with it as long as Vince doesn't like screw it up. Yeah. Because we all know how much Vince cares so much about the tag team division. And I said it sarcastically. Yeah. Uh-huh. All right. Well, uh, Bailey, the uh, not full heel Bailey, uh, will be taking on Charlotte, who could possibly win her tenth. Motherfucking women's championship, tenth it, in her been, hometown. It's been two years, and she's a ten. In her hometown, uh, there she ain't winning, bro. Two to- ten yeah. times, like sorry, I, I get it. I feel like yeah, it's a Sasha running, whatever interference. Bailey retains, yada yada yada. Mike, we're at the point of uh, 
of the non-championship match at the Clash of Champions. Yeah. So technically, shouldn't this just be on the pre-show? Um, because, yeah. I mean, Roman Reigns versus Eric Rowan, a no-DQ match. This feud's been kind of weird uh, to where it's like, you, you, I'm just waiting for the surprise factor. Everybody's like, Luke Harper's going to show up. Something's going to fuck it, you know, like... And I don't know. I feel like they just... I mean, Daniel Bryan did a great job of putting over Rowan. But at the same time, I'm like... Daniel Bryan story, doesn't even have a fucking match. You know? This storyline has been built great, though. It's a no, shame it's, that it's on that it's on a pay-per-view, like you're saying. Doesn't it feel like something big has to happen out of this? Like, like a Luke Harper has to return and join Rowan? And I don't know. Or... Is, it, is that just me wishfully thinking? I, I, I think I understand where you're going with. I think there, there there's something that else to it. You know what I mean? Like they built up like who that, was the that driver? They haven't announced yet. Either that, or it's just a really big fuck you from Vince. Because if you, yeah. you really look at it, it's like, ha ha, they can't boo the guy who had cancer. Ha ha. And oh yeah, we're putting him on a Clash of Champions, but he's not even in the main event, and he's not fighting for a champion. They can't say I'm cramming him down our throats now. That's really what it is when you think about it. It's a lot of fucking matches for a B pay-per-view, man. I'll tell you that. Uh, and especially have a match on there that's not for a championship match. And if they do run out of time, if they nix any of these matches and they don't nix a Roman Reigns match because it's not a champion and for the Clash of Champions match, it'll, it'll be it'll be weird. Uh, now, uh, Kofi Kingston, the WWE champion, versus Randy Orton for the WWE championship Great storytelling with that whole 10 years thing. I asked him about it. Didn't make the cut on my interview. But, uh, you know, 10 years later, he even brought up uh, the fact about how, you know, Randy didn't want him to, to win it or to, to do anything. Or he botched a mistake in the garden and he botched a finish or something. And Randy, like, blew up on him. And I remember I always hear stories about this all the time where Randy Orton didn't like it. And it cut somebody's, like, push. I remember him with, like, Mr. Kennedy. I feel like he hated Mr. Kennedy for some reason, and he cut, they cut his push Kennedy down. Kennedy dropped him on his head like an idiot. Yeah, That's yeah. a different story. Well, it, it, but I mean, it's like something to where somebody messes up in a match against Orton, and then he fucking, he does something to him and kills their fucking career. And ten years later, though, Kofi Kingston, man, uh, could, could this be a loss for Kofi Kingston, or are we going to outshine Randy Orton at the Clash of Champions? The dream continues, baby. I'm telling you, this is a hot storyline. It, it, it's a nice way to to have him get his revenge on on Randy ten years later. This 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 is a situation where Randy doesn't need the belt anymore. Hmm. There's no, plenty of guys on SmackDown that could benefit from it. Randy's always going to be a top star without that belt. He's he's reached like Triple H status. He doesn't fucking need it. So there's no <laughs> point in putting it on him. And, Save and, you know, that fucking loss to somebody where it's gonna. To somebody who's going to be on the you know the show the next night because Randy Orton ain't going to be there forever. Yeah, and you know, son, too. I was watching football this past weekend, and every commercial during a lot of because we watched like five or six games at the same time because we have like six TVs. Every commercial was a WWE SmackDown commercial for Fox, and Kofi was one of the like the prime people in that commercial with the WWE Championship. So I'm I'm pretty sure that Fox. I mean, I, I could be completely wrong, but I'm pretty sure Fox wants to see Kofi coming in as their champion right now. All right. Well, I mean, I, I love the build. This would be a great WrestleMania match, I think, just with the history of that to where they could build something out of this. But uh, a Kofi Kingston win, I guess, at the end of the day. Uh, now, the last two matches, Becky Lynch champion versus Sasha Banks for the Raw Women's Championship. Guys, I mean, I know she's on the cover of the fucking 2K20 with Roman. Um is is her whole movement still working for you guys? Is the man still as hot as it was? Um, or, you know, do, do we ride this wave a little bit longer? Or do we, I don't know, switch it up a little bit and Before, give it to a returning Sasha Banks? So this is what I'm going to say. I mean, the man gimmick, whole gimmick, is starting to fade off a little bit. But I'm excited about this match. And for the reason why is because in 2015 at TakeOver Arrival, it wasn't Arrival, it was uh, it was one of the TakeOvers. One of my favorite matches was Sasha versus Becky Lynch on that card. And I think, Cooter, I, years ago, you and I discussed this match when we yes. used to the YouTube yes. stuff, how incredible that match was. So I hope that they have that same magic and chemistry coming this Sunday. And honestly, for me as a fan... 
like the story with them to have been good. I'm kind of taking the man gimmick and everything else and just putting it to the back seat, and I'm just going to try to enjoy a good wrestling match. They haven't really crammed the man gimmick down our throats, and and I think um, I started it started dropping off for me when they started the whole acknowledging of the relationship with Seth Rollins thing, and people were like, "Ugh!" Like it, it, it wasn't something that I think most fans were enjoying. It, it's it, it just is what it is. I, I hate it when they try to blur the lines of reality and storyline, and, and that was one that just wasn't working because it was very awkward. I think once they removed her from that situation and him from that situation, um, her steam started to pick up again. Yeah. And with the return of Sasha, the way that she, she came out like a bat out of hell, and she, she looks great. The very little ring rust from what it looked like. She, she, she definitely must have gotten some reps in at the PC. And uh, I'm looking forward to this. This is one of those matches where I'm like, I would rather see this at the top of the car than Seth and fucking Braun. <laughs> now, Cooter, you mentioned to me before, like, ah, I don't want to see it go back and forth, go back and forth. Sasha and Charlotte had a, 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 a year at one time where they, they became like five-time champions alone to where yes, every month it was back, back and, and forth. forth. Yes, and I think it that it was terrible, but it worked for like a little bit to where these two women are on the same level, like they're champion, 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 and then something had to give to where one of them was and yada, yada, yada. I get that. I think at this point, I think you have to put the belt on Sasha Banks to have Becky chase it for a few months uh, or something to that effect because I think her chasing it and, you know, defeating all whatever I think will probably be make help spice her up a little bit, you know, turn that notch back up on her of as far as, uh, you know, put more steam under her whole gimmick. So I don't think a loss would hurt Becky, but depending on how she loses, whether it's like an interference with uh, – Bailey or something to that effect, and you know something where Sasha gets it. I think having the fl- the scripts flipped a little bit to where Becky. Chases I think they got to do it in, in in a town where she's gonna get booed to fucking hell. I don't know if Charlotte's the place to do it. I I I feel like there are certain markets where it'll work. Where it depends what reaction they went because I I I, I truly feel if she beats Becky and Charlotte for the title, they're gonna cheer her like you wouldn't believe. And I think it's a situation where. They want you to boo the shit out of Sasha because she's such a fucking nasty heel right now. So true. I, I think I think Becky's walking away with a win, yeah. but I think it's going to be a screwy finish. Okay. Right, well, uh, last but not least, last of the Clash of Champions. Yes, it is the least. It's the fucking <laughs> match on the card. Seth Rollins versus your future Universal Champion Braun Strowman, guys. Uh, <laughs> um, what do you think? Uh, I mean, Braun had some. Uh, it, an incredible build, incredible build up last year to where the dude's flipping fucking semis and nothing can beat him. What it makes me think that fucking Seth Rollins can fucking beat this animal or monster among men, I guess, uh, of a Braun Strowman character. Yes, he's the Beast Slayer, two-time Beast Slayer or whatever. But that's you know, like when you start doing silly things, fucking flipping cars and whatever else. You know, it's it oh, just like, what can, what can... Surviving ambulance crashes. Yeah, listen, what can listen, beat you? At this what can point, happen? You, I think you realize the blueprint is very easy to beat Braun Strowman. Three F5s, and you're back in the hotel room <laughs> drinking champagne. Yep. That's it. It's over. So, just F5 them three times, and... So, Credo, who do we got next week on AWP? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, all right, well, I guess at the end of the day, the Clash of Champions, a lot of retentions, no major upsets, I guess. Just a few? I don't know. Clash or- I, I think overall it's going to be a good show on paper. Um, I'm looking forward to a couple matches. I just hope they deliver. Um, AJ and Cedric Alexander, Becky and Sasha, and The Revival. A new day. Those yeah. Three, th- those are the three matches I'm looking more forward to than any of the matches on that card. Hopefully they get Shinsuke Nakamura some new ring gear because yeah that that long sleeve onesie is <laughs> is a little too much. I'm telling you, he looks like one of those like 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 it's like one of those like Halloween costumes that like women buy like if they want to be a cop or something those one piece fuck suits. Yes, it's um, terrible. Yeah, I could see I could see that being sold at Party City. Be a slutty Shinsuke Nakamura. <laughs> right. Have a good night and uh, don't tug your peckers. Bitches, shout out to Harambe.